Call the roll. Council Arena. Present. Council Camuso. Present. Vice President Delarusso. Present. Council Lango Kern. Present. Council Marks. Present. Council Pepper. Present. President Mayorkas. Present. Seven members present and absent. Kindly please rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. First, thank you and welcome to the Medford City Council meeting. It's an enjoyable uh, action that this council is going to take tonight in recognizing our student athletes at Medford High School on their accomplishments, both uh, on the court, on the ice, and on the parallel bars in the classroom. First, tonight, we're going to uh, recognize this is off by myself, President Mayarco, uh, Council Accommodations. The 2010-2011 Greater Boston League champion Met Mifford High School uh, girls varsity basketball team. I'd like to have Coach Leo Burke come up first. Coach. <laughs> Is Kerry Burke here, assistant? No, no, she's not. Christine Cotto. No. Nope. <laughs> All right, let me read this citation. Uh, the Memphis City Council takes pleasure in awarding this council commendation to Leo Burke, head coach, Memphis High School girls varsity basketball, in recognition in winning the Greater Boston League title and a playoff berth in the MIAA Division I North girls basketball tournament for the 2010-2011 season. This is the first championship GBL since 1992. 1992. Great accomplishment, ladies. And uh, we're going to have Coach Burke bring up the team for the recipient of their citations. But first, I want to have Coach Burke say a few words. Uh, thank you very much for having us uh, here tonight. Uh, the girls worked very hard on the court and off the court this year. Uh, we have six girls that are uh, on the National Honor Society. So it just goes to show that they work hard in the classroom, just not on the court. Uh, we went 14-7 and seven overall this year. 8-0 uh, in the GBL. I think it's the first time a Method High girls team ever went undefeated in the GBL. Uh, we only lose two girls for next year, two big girls. And hopefully uh, next year we'll be invited back up here with another uh, GBL champion. Thank you very much. Right, we're going to do uh, a Okay. Sophomore guard, Kathleen Callahan. Kathleen. Well, I'm going to just name the names and you just tell me if they're not. Junior forward, Jackie Palekia. Senior guard, Casey Moran. <laughs> Junior forward, Emily Welch. Emily. Okay. All right, no, no handshakes, fist pumps. Junior forward, Bianca Naji. Grandfather, that whack, huh? <laughs> Junior forward, Catherine Ellisick. Catherine. <laughs> Senior guard, Lindsay Van Doyen. <laughs> right here. Junior guard, Tanya Holmes. Sophomore forward, Aaliyah McCausland Ace. <laughs> 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 
Sophomore forward, Lydia Regan. Lydia. Thank you. And freshman forward, Sarah Donnelly. Great job. <laughs> to our Lady Mustang basketball champs. All right, next, this is offered by Council Lungo Kern. Council Accommodations 2010-2011. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Coach Burke. I almost forgot this. Donato would never speak to me. This is from Paul Donato, Representative Paul Donato. Uh, to Coach Leo Burke in recognition and is guiding the 2011 Lady Mustang team to the state tournament and undefeated Greater Boston League Championship, uh, the first since 1992. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and co uh, continued success in all endeavors on this fifth day of April 2011. Uh, Robert DeLeo, speaker, and uh, offered by Paul J. Donato, state representative and leader also. This is for <laughs> representative Donato. Council Lungo Kern. This is uh, in recognition for the Boston League Champions Method High School Girls Varsity Hockey Team. I think it's just a really great honor to see our girls doing so well. I think this is the, maybe the fifth year. Am I right? Fifth year? Sixth year. And it's kind of bittersweet. I, actually, on the news recently, and I think, it's, I think it was Presque Isle, Maine, which is way up, um, the girls are having a hard time getting their hockey team started. So I almost, although I felt bad for them and I wish them luck, I breathed a nice sigh of relief because not only – have our girls been playing for six, six years, um, they're doing so well and they're, you know, grabbing championships, which is amazing. Um, I went to a game this year and just the difference between six years and, and now is outstanding. So congratulations, ladies. I'm just going to read the accommodation. Uh, Medford City Council takes pleasure in awarding this council accommodation to each of the players, including the coaches. Um, first one is to head coach David McCarthy, Medford High School Girls Varsity Hockey. And it's in recognition of winning the Greater Boston League title in a playoff berth in the MIAA Division I State Hockey Tournament for the 2010-2011 season, signed by Council President Robert Mayako and myself. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we also have Coach Rayanne Forbes with us today. So that invite her out. I'd like, I'd like to thank the council for taking uh, time out of their busy schedule to uh, welcome us tonight and to recognize the accomplishments of not just uh, our hockey team over here, but all the fine winter athletes that we share the, the season with sitting in front of us, too. Um, just a couple of things, uh, a season to be proud of, 14 wins, four losses, and two ties. Uh, but most importantly, or equally as important, 12 out of 20 are on the honor roll in, in the school system. So I think that's a, a great accomplishment on both ends. So to the council, thank you very much. Um, Bridget Flaherty. <laughs> Ashley Morris. So 
Oh, she has six more years? Oh, yeah. yeah. Six yeah, more years, that one? Yeah. Wow. Jackie Webb? <laughs> Kaylee O'Donovan? <laughs> Brit Brittany Stanton? <laughs> Jennifer White? I saw her dad. <laughs> Denise Palmacci. <laughs> Samantha Lopolato. <laughs> Kaylee Lanzilli. <laughs> Brittany Lindsay. Ninety one goals for Brittany Lindsay. Christina Bovey. Mary Kate Cullinane. <laughs> Shannon Hussey. <laughs> Next year's captain. Sarah Moulton. <laughs> Michaela Davidson. Adrian Perrazzo. Marissa Williams. Maggie Flaherty. Cassie Abbott. Christina Hillis. <laughs> Just on behalf, on behalf of the council, um, not only the girls' hockey team, but the basketball team, the hockey team, all our student athletes. Just great job and keep up the good work. You make your families proud and you make the city of Medford proud. Um, I know my, I took my daughter to a hockey game. And she just looked up to the girls so much. She, she couldn't wait to get on the ice. So you don't know who's out there and who's looking up to you. Congratulations to all. Uh, Councilor Penta would like to say a few words. Councilor Penta. I think I would be remiss if I didn't uh, um, say something. This seems to be like an all-girls night for sports, and that's <laughs> great because it's, it's the coming of America. There's, um, right now, there's 51% more men than there are women in the country. So I think we have to recognize that fact that they're in the move. They're on the move. But tonight, they're on the move in the city of Medford. And they've done some wonderful things to make our community proud. Not only do they make our community proud, it makes me personally proud because there are, and I don't mean to single anyone out, but unfortunately, I am going to do that because it makes me personally proud to recognize some individuals who I've seen grow up through this system. And, and one in particular, um, 
who I've known before she was born. And, and that's a Jennifer White. And um, she definitely personifies the engine that can, the little engine that can. She's totally dedicated to her position of wanting to play hockey. She's a true credit and an asset to the hockey team and to her parents, and more importantly, to the whole sporting community because she gives her heart, not that, every other, not that the other students don't, but she gives her heart. I know her, I know the background of the family, and I would just like to say thank you, and you truly deserve the recognition that you got here this evening. But the second group, it's a family. It's, a, it's the Lanzilli family, because they were here some seven years ago, I believe sitting in this front row with a group of other individuals when they were told by the school, the administration, and maybe even some politicians, you can't do it, find the money, go get a team, come back, and prove yourself at another time. Well, not only did they prove themselves as a team, never mind as a family, but as a team, they really have put Medford on the map in the last six years. Not only have they had three students of theirs, three of their children, play in the program through the years, one in particular, I, I think, really deserves a tremendous amount of credit, and, that, and that's Brittany, because she, in essence, has made and conjoled the team to the point of, this year, she was the second highest scorer in the conference. Second to a girl who was a senior from Woburn by only two points. That's a huge accomplishment for a ninth grader, never mind a tenth grader or eleventh grader. That really shows the dedication, the talent, and the performance that that girl has. We can go on and talk about all the goals that she has scored through the years, seventh grade, she had 23 goals, eighth grade, 26 goals, ninth grade, 42 goals, 91 goals, 40 assists, 140 points. But that's not the story. The story is that she and her sisters, as well as the other girls, played as a team, a teammate that collectively has made this city proud, that has made girls hockey where it is today. It's on the face of the map in the city of Medford and within the Medford public school system. And I think because of that, we owe them, as elected officials, a huge thank you, because the day they came here some seven years ago and were told, go out, find the money, go get a coach, and prove yourself, not only have they proved themselves, they put them on the map to be division leaders and champions. And for that, I personally and publicly say thank you. Thank you to the Whites, the Jennifer family, and every other student in this room here tonight. Because not only, excuse me, not only are you good players, you're good students. You are model citizens for the city of Medford, and I hope you keep that up for the rest of your lives. Thank you very much. I just want to add something to that. Uh, six years ago, too, there was a council that stood up by herself supporting girls hockey, and that was Council Brianna Lungo Kern, and she deserves a round of applause for her. All right, next up at bat, 2011-333, offered by Council Camuso, be it resolved that the Method City Council commend and congratulate the Method High School Mustang Boys hockey team for capturing the Greater Boston League title and securing a playoff berth in the MIAA Division I North Hockey Playoff, and further that they be invited to the council meeting to receive council commendations. Council Camuso. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, before we uh, talk about the hockey team, I want to congratulate all the uh, interscholastic athletes that we have here tonight. It's such a true honor to have you here. When you look around this room and you look at names like Ma, White, Lanzilli, these are outstanding athletes of last generation, whether it was on the football field, whether it was the Cullinanes on the track, the Whites, long athletes in this community. And it's now the new generation of our students that are, are, are making our city proud. And uh, for that, I am, I am very uh, humbly thankful. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, because Medford is certainly getting uh, on the map more and more as we embark uh, across the state to um, to uh, highlight our athletes. So uh, I want to congratulate everyone that's already been up here. But uh, without further ado, our uh, hockey team had an outstanding uh, year this year, and, um, and that was under the uh, guidance and leadership of uh, Steve DeBenedictus and Mark Bates, who was the assistant coach. Steve is in Florida uh, with his family on vacation, but Mark's here this evening. And Mark, uh, we all love your cousin and, and what he's done for the city, but uh, I think Brittany Lanzilli is going to uh, be beating his record of uh, points and goals up at Medford High School. But uh, if Mark, you'd come on up here on behalf of the team. 
I'm going to just read the first one. It says, the Medford City Council takes pleasure in awarding this council accommodation to Mark Bates, assistant coach, Medford High School Varsity Hockey, in recognition of winning the Greater Boston League title in a playoff berth in the MIAA Division I North Hockey Tournament for the 2010-2011 season. Signed this evening, Robert A. Mayako, Council President, and Paul A. Camuso, City Councilor. What, uh, one thing I'd just like to say about all the young men that are before us uh, at this particular part of the meeting, and, 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 um, and that's the young athletes on the hockey team. Over the past few years, they've really built their character, their integrity, and their leadership. And uh, under uh, yourself and, and Steve, I know that it's not all about what goes on on the ice. It's about what happens in the classroom. It's about what happens at home. And uh, you guys have to be proud for, uh, for making that a priority as well, because all too often, uh, you can forget about the important things and worry just about the hockey or just about the athletics. But you know what? At the end of the day, unless you're someone like Sean Bates, the sports are not going to put the bread on your table. It's going to be the, uh, the education. So you guys have made that a priority as well as the other coaches. So I think that has to be recognized as well this evening. But uh, oh, that's Steve De Benedictus when he gets home from Florida. Uh, Pat Trainer. Cam Howard. Mike Gendro, captain. Chris Silva. Billy Ivey. CJ Bork Nikki Lima Kevin Mazzaro Brian Enos Tyler Zizzo. Jonathan Nazaro. Jimmy Cicchini. Charlie Chunad. Colin Hussey. Chris Hayes. Charlie Cavallo. Jared Silva. Jake Moore. Ryan Woolley. Will Brennan. DJ Galvin. And uh, before the coach says a few words, I just want to acknowledge the athletes as well, again, in their families that are committed to uh, the program. By your commitment, it has enabled the City of Medford to uh, partake in an agreement with uh, the uh, DCR, which is formerly known as the MDC, to take control on a temporary basis of Leconte Rink. And uh, we're hoping, as elected officials, with the mayor working hand-in-hand -hand with this council, to eventually own the rink so that uh, Medford always has a top priority down at Leconte Rink. 
And if it wasn't for the committed families in the uh, programs, we would not even be able to look at that. So uh, that's something that's in the long plans of this community, and it's because of the people that sit here before us, and it's going to be your children someday that will benefit uh, by having a rink that's owned by the city of Medford. So thank you for that as well. Right, I'd just like to thank the um, city council for having us here tonight. Um, the season, we had some uh, ups and downs. Um, obviously, winning the Greater Boston League, one of our goals for the season, we were able to accomplish that. Um, after a couple of years, we've had a hard time winning non-league games. We snapped that drought this year. Hopefully, uh, going forward, we'll have a better non-league record. Um, outside of the hockey part, um, the academic side of things, the kids are doing a great job in the classroom. 50% uh, of the whole boys' hockey program is on the honor roll, and that's uh, something they're doing a great job with, and hopefully they can keep it going forward, and hopefully hockey will continue to improve as we move ahead. Thank you. All right, next. This is 2011-334, offered by Council Camuso. Be resolved that the Memphis City Council commend and congratulate Memphis High School student-athlete Catherine Kulik on capturing the Greater Boston League Gymnastic All-Around Championship, and further that Catherine be invited to the council meeting to receive a council commendation. Catherine? Once again, we're uh, very honored to have this young woman here this evening who uh, has not only excelled on the gymnastics mat, but uh, in the classroom at Medford High School. And uh, we're very, very proud of her. We join your parents, uh, Bruce and Maggie, who are just as proud and uh, want to wish you well and uh, your future endeavors. But uh, if you may indulge me to just read this, that the Medford City Council takes pleasure in awarding this council commendation to Catherine Kulik. Medford High School Girls Varsity Gymnastics, in recognition of winning the GBL All-Around Gymnastics Championship and being named to the Greater Boston League All-Star Team for the 2010-2011 season. Signed this day, Robert A. Mayako, Council President, and Paul A. Camuso, City Councilor. Catherine's by herself, you know. You guys and ladies, you have a team. She just told me she's going to have other people here next year. Anything else? All right. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. They can Young stay. ladies. They can, oh. they can stay. Well, you can stay for the council meeting and listen to us. I'm sure you want to do that. Listen, congratulations. Parents, you're doing a great job. Coaches, keep it up. We want to see you back here next year. I want to talk about trash barrels and stickers. You want to talk about trash barrels and stickers? Uh, Beth Fuller. We're going to take Beth Fuller. Chair to clear two minute recess.
On the motion of Vice President Del Russo, take uh, move suspension rules, take a paper out of order. All those in favor, all those opposed, bench is granted on page four. This is 2011-315. This is a community read program that I offered last week that was tabled for April and May. On the motion of Vice President Del Russo, paper ta uh, from the table, all those in favor, all those opposed. And we have uh, Beth Fuller here to give us uh, our annual goodies. You're going to give us goodies this year, Beth? Yes, I brought gifts. Thank you. Name and address for the record. Beth Fuller, 15 West Street, Medford, here representing Med the Friends of the Public Library, Medford's Community Read. This year, we're talking about a book called 5,000 Days Like This One, which is about a family farm which is being passed on. It's a farm in Apple Orchard, so my lovely assistant <laughs> could pass out the free samples. <coughs> Thank you. This is health food. <laughs> It is indeed. Mm. And so we um, have invited the author, Jane Brox, who will be speaking to us in late May. But starting Thursday, we're having an event at Whole Foods to talk about local foods. So this book talks about local history in Lowell and Lawrence, family farms. Um, the farm that was the apple orchard belonging to her family has become a CSA, a Community Supported Agriculture. And um, we also will be featuring um, talks at uh, two of Medford's finest ice cream stores, Colleen's and CB Scoops. We invite everybody to that. Um, we also will be offering children's books and activities. And we'll be doing another thing where we're going to be knitting little hats to give to Save the Children for the Knit One, Save One campaign. And they're little apple hats. And I have gifts for... Councilman Luongo Kumuso's son. And Mr. Kumuso's son. Hey, wait a minute. You're welcome. We also have copies Isn't of our... Isn't that nice? <laughs> we also have copies of the, the brochures, which I'll leave here as well. My lovely assistant. Callaway gets one and James and... What about... No? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so we invite everybody to participate and come to the public library and to the events around town. This is the book that we'll be featuring, 5,000 Days Like This One. And it's been a really wonderful experience. This is our third community read. We've had, um, we've done several other books. The other two books were one about fishing and the other one was um, about the molasses flood in Boston. And we find that Books that feature food go over really well in Medford. We have um, enormous participation. We hope you all come. Thank you very much. Beth, great job, and all the people associated with the program. Marvelous work. Thank you very much. Great we work. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, on the motion of Vice President Del Russo, revert back to regular order business. All those in favor, all those opposed? On page two, motions, orders, and resolutions. This is 2011-335, offered by Council Lungo Kern. Be it resolved uh, that when the sidewalk on Ashcroft Road is installed, it is completed up to the driveway on Massachusetts Avenue. The current plans have the sidewalk being cut short. Council Lungo Kern. Thank you, President Mayako. If we could send this resolution to um, our engineer's office as well as to our chief executive officer, the mayor, um, Ashcroft Road has taken a beating in the, within the last, you know, six to eight months. A lot of work has been done. National Grid's been on the road redoing the pipes. Um, it's leaked onto Mass Ave. You know, the road's a mess, but that's besides the, beside the point. They are repaving the road, and they are doing, redoing the sidewalks. On one side, coming up Ashcroft, they're coming all the way around to the neighbor's, um, which makes sense to the neighbor's driveway. On the other side, they want to cut short and not bring it around to the other neighbor's driveway, which I, I don't know if it's to save money or um, I, I really don't know what the issue is. But if we can make a recommendation to bring the sidewalk all the way up and around rather than forcing foot traffic onto the street, it would be safer for pedestrians and make a lot more sense. So. Uh, move approval with On the motion of Council Lungo Curran, Council Caluso. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, certainly I support this, but my only question is Mass Ave. Is that a private way or is it a public um, right of way? Do you know? 
Because if it's a private way, uh, uh, basically every other private way has to pay to get the work done in front of their house. So I, I think we have to have some equity here, um, unless it was existing and it was damaged during construction. So I think the first question we have to answer is if it's a private or public way. All I know is on the other side, they're coming up onto Mass Ave and curving around, and I don't understand why they can't come and curve around on the, on the opposite side. So they are coming onto Mass Ave, whether or not it's a private way, they should do it on both, both directions because there's a lot of people in ba with babies, and it's like 40 kids in the neighborhood, and people are walking all over the, all around that neighborhood. And to, to stop short and to direct baby carriages and our elderly out into the street just to me doesn't make any sense. Well, so. Mr. President, I certainly agree, but on the same token, when you have people on Chandler Road that paid $80,000 to get the street done and the sidewalks, and uh, I just think we have to have some equity. We can't pick and choose which streets we're going to allow work to be done on that may or may not be. And, and the answer might be easy. It's it possibly, very possibly, a public way. But I, uh, I would think that bringing this resolution forward, we should have had that information if it was public or private. I know Ashcroft is public way. I know that because the one of the neighbors did call me on this and brought this to my attention. But Mass Ave. Who's if we want to lay it on the table for a week and find out from so the DPW. The engineer is in charge of the project. She told the homeowner on Mass Ave that they weren't going to come up and around for some reason. I'm wondering if that's the reason, though. They're coming up and around on the other side, though, so I, it, it just doesn't seem fair in that respect as well. Well, then, if that's well, the I'm, case, we, maybe they shouldn't do that side either. If it's a, I'm just asking the question, if it's a public or private way, I think it's pertinent because you've got to have equity when it comes to this because every other private way in the Lawrence Estates and in, in West Medford and North Medford, they've been paying for years to have these type of projects done. So, Well, let me send it to the city engineer for her comment. On that motion of Councilor Lungo Kern, Councilor... Uh, I think the resolution raises the, the question that should have been it should be raised and should have been raised many many years ago. What's the difference between the issue of a public and a private way when, in fact, anyone who living on a private way is not going to be assessed any less for his house and for tax purposes, his water bill or anything else like that? Now, if you're on a private way and the street is getting beaten up and chopped up due to the weather and the city's plowing and whatever traffic goes on the street then I, I think the issue should be that every single private way in the city should be a public way anyway. It's the city of Medford Street, whether you want to call it public or private. And I think, you know, I'm glad you brought this forward because I think this should be the issue that highlights wherever we're going with this whole thing. You know, I'm, I'm quite sure that if I lived in a private way and my house was worth $500,000 and I'm paying taxes on $500,000 and I'm getting my water and sewer bill and I'm getting it every six weeks or every two months like everyone else is getting around here, I don't see anything less because it's a private way. Can anybody explain? Can anybody in this room, this council, explain the difference between city services and the public and a private way that your taxes don't pay for as compared to what you would pay for? You can't because they don't exist. They're one and all the same. So I would rather not have that referred there, Mr. President. I think it's about time that we sit down with the city solicitor and, and the city engineer and just finally, once and for all, review this entire issue between a public and a private way. Some people think you own to the middle of the street. Some people think you own to where the sidewalk is. Some people say you can park to the middle of the street. Some people say you don't have sidewalks over there. There's some private ways with sidewalks, some that don't, some people that don't want them. It's too much of a confusion. And more importantly, Mr. President, you have city water and sewer lines running down that street on either side. You have a fire truck going down that street on any given emergency. You have a public utility truck going down there. You have a city of Medford truck going down there. What is the wonderful distinction between a private and a public way? What your information, Vice President Del Russo? I'm under the impression that the uh, city solicitor at the behest of former Councilor Lucini Burke gave us a rather a uh, lengthy dissertation on the matter in Committee of the Whole in the past term. Further correction to that, Mr. President, the dissertation may have been verbal, but there's nothing in writing. We have asked for this before. The distinction has to be made clear. What is the difference between a public and a private way when taxes of a taxpayer are being paid the same for the use of that street, well, public or private? If I may, you know that, as well as I that the city solicitor has given opinions on what, what is not a, an accepted public way. That's an so accepted. Can, I'm talking about incorporating it into a public street, public way. And, and there are 
legal distinctions, as we know. But listen, if you want to get it uh, finally uh, clarified. Yes. Absolutely. Sure. On that motion, as, as amended, uh, Councillor Camuso. And uh, I want to thank my uh, esteemed colleague, Councillor Penta, for bringing this up because uh, I think we have to have some clarity on this. Esteemed. And uh, as I look at the um, agendas from 2009 esteemed. here, uh, this was brought up by Councillor Burke in 2009. And uh, at the time, the concern of this council was the inequity, um, basically, amongst people that have paid in the past. So uh, I, I think it's about time that we, um, we do get our hands around this. And, and, if, and if it means making every street in the city a, uh, a public way, uh, then so be it. But um, I, I think the question has to be answered. And, um, and, and quite frankly, uh, I'm not uh, opposed to uh, approving this tonight if indeed Massachusetts Avenue is considered a public way. So um, can, can we uh, move approval of the paper uh, with the uh, auspices that if it's a public way uh, that we do it, and if it's a private way, then we wait until we get some conformity amongst all the others. I just don't think it's fair to the uh, Murphy family and the Glyona family and people like that that have come out of their pocket. They're still paying their $4,000 in taxes, plus paying to get their street done over the years. We have to have a clearer picture, and that's what this council discussed uh, in the meetings reflective um, of 2009. So uh, I agree with Council On the motion Penta. as amended, yes, by Council Camuso and Council Penta. Council Marks. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I would agree that there is no added benefit in living on a private way. The only added benefit is if you have to do your street over, you have to pay for it. That's no benefit. Mm. If you look at the many state roads in this community, Mr. President, Middlesex Ave, Elm Street, the Fells Way, any residents that live on these streets and has, have a tree in front of their home, the city of Method won't go out and trim the tree on a state road. They pay the same tax as you or I when they want to get their sidewalk repaired or fixed. The city of Method doesn't repair the sidewalk. They have to wait for the state. Think how long it is. Uh, it's long enough to wait for the city. Think how long it takes for the state to come in there and repair your sidewalk. So there, there, you know, there are much larger issues, I believe, uh, one being the state roads in this community that uh, we have to look out for all residents. Whether you live on a state road, a private way, or a public way, the city, in my opinion, should be attending to your needs. That's where you pay your taxes. That's the government that's there to represent you. So I, I would ask, Mr. President, that uh, this paper, again, I think uh, Council Penta asked that it be, did you ask Council that it be sent back to uh, Attorney Rumley? Yes. C city Solicitor Rumley, that be sent to uh, City Sisla, uh, Sisla, uh, Solicitor. Solicitor Rumley. Uh, for further review, Mr. President, and also to review state roads in this community and uh, why the City of Memphis can't get more involved uh, in uh, the day-to-day -day maintenance on city roads. On the motion as amended. Uh, Councilor Camuso. Thank you. And um, I, know, I know one reason why people uh, in the past have liked the distinction of having a private way, and that was because uh, a lot of times they didn't pay to get it um, paved and things of that nature, so it wouldn't be a speedway. Uh, we have residents in the area of Woods Road this evening, and if we remember when the bridge was done over um, on Grove Street, at that particular time, some of the residents didn't want Bustle Road paved and Century Street Extension paved because now it's a raceway. And, um, and it goes back to, um, it goes back to uh, the public way, private way type thing. So uh, I know Councilor Longo happens to live on Massachusetts Ave. Have you polled all your neighbors and are they all for uh, this project or, or did you not speak with any of them? Uh, uh, Council Longo current. Just because a lot of people, like I said, um, particularly I know Century Street had a problem extension, and Councilor Mayako, you were uh, you were around then when uh, the neighbors uh, didn't like it becoming a raceway when it was paved. Yeah, we're talking about 10 to 20 feet of sidewalk. But um, but if, about if, eight homes in the street. I've talked to a, a few of my neighbors, um, and it makes complete sense to not direct foot traffic out into the street. But at the same token, if it is a private way, I hope you and your neighbors uh, don't want to do something that other neighborhoods have not had the privilege of doing. That's why I asked Absolutely the question. not. Absolutely not. I know they're coming around the other side, so they are going on to Mass Ave on the other side of Ashcroft. So it just made sense to me whether or not it's public way. They're going to come on to Mass Ave. One side, they should come on on the other side. This road has been completely destroyed um, in, in that section of Mass Ave onto Governor's Ave. is just a mess. National Grid has parked their trucks put their piping all over the place, so the least they can do at their expense is to finish the sidewalk. 
On the motion as amended. President, All those in favour? Just uh, so. another, another valid point that uh, was just brought to my attention. Uh, there are a lot of streets in that particular neighbourhood too that doesn't have any sidewalks. So maybe we can look for mitigation to uh, improve some of their streets as well. That they don't have any sidewalks and they're walking on grass in front of their house. So mm. maybe if we can look at National Grid to do that as well. But let's get the answers the Council of Penta brought up. There's no, I'm not asking questions. for sidewalk in front of my, my house. This is completely all the way up the hill from my house. I don't, want, I don't have sidewalk. I'm not asking for it. I'm asking for the project to com be complete, not stopped halfway due to shorty work just to save hundreds. We're talking hundreds of dollars, <coughs> not thousands, just to save hundreds of dollars. I'm not asking for them to pave my sidewalk. Thank you. On the motion as amended. All those in favor? All those opposed? Papers approved as amended. Oh, on the motion, suspension by Council Marks for. Mr. Sorrello, a resident of the community, would you like to speak? Mr. President. Take Bridget first, would you like? On the motion for suspension, all those in favor? All those opposed? Suspension is granted. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is John Storella. I uh, live on 22 Metcalf Street in Medford. And uh, I, I want to thank you, Councilor Marx, uh, for allowing suspension of rules. And I want to thank you, too, Mr. President. I do appreciate this opportunity to speak uh, before you uh, on a, what I consider a, a very, very important topic. That's why I'm wearing a suit and tie. So anyway, uh, the topic is really a, uh, the petition uh, to, for charter change in the city of Metro. This petition is already underway. As you know, I've spoken on this subject uh, previously. Uh, and what happened was that uh, some young citizens of Metro took it up and they requested of the state that the petition proceed. Once they did that, there's a whole legal process that takes place. And that legal process, by law, must be followed. And the reason I speak here before you is because it involves the city council. The city council is part of this. And you see, I've given you an explanation of what the law says there. I've, I've also given you some uh, petitions, which I hope you'll get signatures for. The, uh, the petition requires, or the law requires that the, uh, for the petition to proceed, we've got to get uh, 5,200 signatures. These signatures have to be certified by the registrar. And the registrar uh, has, to, has, to, has to okay these within 10 days. Then the registrar puts this before the city council. And this is where the city council is involved. The city council has 30 days after that by law to put this on the ballot. And this is a, by the way, a very, very democratic procedure. This procedure will bring democracy to the people of Medford. I think this is one of the most important petitions to come before this council in 23 years. That's the last time a charter was established. And what it does, well, I know doing this, I'm going to make some friends, but I'm also going to make some enemies. But I think it would also help <coughs> the people who are opposed to this petition, because this is for all the people. And how can we go wrong bringing more democracy to the people? It will help our children. It will help our grandchildren. It will bring more participation by the people. This is democracy in action. When our people participate, that's what we want. We don't want apathy from our people, Mr. President. We want them to participate in their government, just as you are participating. And therefore, we, we brought up this uh, 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 petition. And the petition requires the signatures. Once the signatures are gathered, the process moves on its own, and it involves the city council. It involves the city clerk. It involves the registrar. It involves the Department of Community Development. It involves also the attorney general of the state. It involves all of these departments, and they will take place automatically. We have, of course, a limit of time. We don't have to think that we're rushing into changes. We are not. The whole procedure will take two years. And all along the way, we will 
all vote. This will, no, this will proceed step by step only by a vote of the people and by participation of the people. We will have to elect a commission, which will call, call the Charter Commission. It will be nine people. They will not be paid. They will volunteer their time to the city. They will be citizens who have the city at heart, who want to work for the city. And they will hold hearings. They will hold hearings for 18 months. And they will have to submit reports to the Attorney General and to our department, uh, uh, Lauren De Lorenzo of, of Community Development. And it will proceed slowly. This is a deliberate, slow, methodical procedure. Nothing is being rammed down anyone's throat. This is really democracy. In fact, just collecting these signatures is democracy in action. So I say to the people, it's very, very complicated, but we don't have to go into the complications at this time. To keep it simple, all we have to do is sign the petition. That's all we have to do. Then the process will take on a movement of its own, and it will proceed. And that's exactly what we want. We need 5,200 certified signatures. Now, that, is, that comes out to we have 34,000 registered voters in the city of Method. We need to get 15% of that. That comes to 5,200. But in order to get really certified signatures, we probably need to collect 6,000 signatures. That's not an easy job. 